Hello, welcome back to Sharks Happen. My name is Hal. I am your host going over shark attacks from the 1900s till present, mostly large sharks, and we're going to get started with small sharks. We're going to go over the Long Island attacks that happened last month. Uh, the first attack actually happened uh, June 30th, and that was at Jones Beach. A uh, man was out swimming. I didn't see a story on this one with any details as to how far offshore or how deep a water, but he was bitten in the foot. He thinks he was bitten in the foot, but he had a laceration in his foot, and the authority said it's possible, you know, possible shark attack. Um, so, you know, could have been other things that did it, but they said it's possibly a shark. I, I haven't heard much on him. It's a smaller shark anyway. We normally don't go over these, but seeing as there was such a spate of them in, in one month, I figured we'd cover these. And a couple of them are kind of interesting too anyway. But uh, then Smith Point Beach was July 3rd. So about four days later on Smith Point Beach, uh, there's Zachary Gallo, he is, uh, he is a lifeguard and he is pretending to be a drowning victim. So he's totally still in the water um, and he's sitting there and he gets bit in his hand and he goes ahead and punches the shark and the shark swims off and he can't believe how much blood's coming from his arm and his hand. He was bitten in the hand when he didn't realize he got bit in the chest also. So in fighting the shark, shark probably bit him. He said adrenaline probably made it so that he didn't even notice that second bite. Uh, so he ended up uh, going in and he needed five stitches for his wounds to his hand and his chest from these sharks. These sound, that sounds like a, a sand tiger shark to me. And I think they did say that that's pop possibly a sand tiger. Uh, that went ahead and got him and you know he punched a shark and got it off of him but that was the attack over there at Smith Point Beach and then on just four days later from that one on the 7th of July uh, you go over and a, 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 there was a gentleman that was out um, do they have his name on this one yeah John Mullins another lifeguard he's 17 years old and he was out he was only, I've seen 100 to 250 yards or 100 and 150 feet from shore. And he's out there and he's pretending like he's a drowning victim. He's also not moving and he ends up getting bit in his foot. So he ends up with the foot lacerated and I believe there's, uh, I'll post a link with a story that has a couple photos, one of them that looks like his foot. And there's a bunch of little round holes in there and that's definitely a green air shark that grabbed onto him, probably a smaller one. Uh, I think they said five foot shark in this situation. So that was on July 7th. So that's three attacks within eight days there. And they weren't done. The 13th of July, you go over to uh, same beach, Ocean, Be Ocean Beach, is that Ocean Beach? Yeah, Ocean, Ocean Beach, same one as the 7th, but this is six days later, same beach. Uh, there's a gentleman out and he is uh, Sean Donnelly and he is 41 years old. He's out doing some surfing. He's only 40 feet from shore, laying on his board in seven feet deep water and he's waiting for a wave. This is at 7.30 in the morning and a shark clamps down on his calf. He turns and slaps the shark and the shark swims off. Um, I believe the shark swam off and turned to come back at him, but a wave came and brought him into shore. Uh, he was taken in and he was dealt with. I believe they have a picture of his calf and you can see it looks like a tooth mark, a slit right through going sideways through his middle of his calf. So uh, that one I, I figured that would, that had to be like a bull or you know something that, that has those kind of teeth because you're not going to get that from a sand tiger. You're going to get those round ones or a bunch of tears and scratches. Uh, so um, that one looked like a different type of shark and, and it turns out it is. Now again, it's a small shark. I believe they said this one was five feet also. And that was the 13th on Ocean Beach at 7.30 in the morning. But later that day uh, at Seaview Beach, there was, uh, did they have a name on the Seaview Beach one? Nope, 49 year old at 6 p.m. And he is out standing in waist deep water and he is bitten in the hand and in the buttocks. So the shark came up and bit him in the hand and bit him in the butt and then it just swam off and he walked his way into shore and got himself taken care of. Um, no, no word of how many stitches or anything like that. Um, one of them only had two stitches and needed antibiotics. So uh, um, that was probably another one of those uh, gray nurses where you have the holes in there, but if they're not 
deep and they're not just continuously bleeding, I'm sure they just let those heal up, scab up and heal up on them. So some of them probably have to be stitched to be able to stop the bleeding. And that one was the Ocean Beach, uh, that one was at 6 p.m. at night that happened to the 49 year old. And then there's, jeez, oh there's so many of those. That was Seaview Beach, not Ocean Beach. The last one that I had covered and went over is Max Haynes and that was at, uh, uh, what is the beach? Kismet Beach, 5.45 in the afternoon. Uh, he was a 16 year old and he was surfing 20 yards off the shore and he ended up being bit in the foot and he ended up with a four inch laceration to his foot. Um, I don't know that, that, uh, that a sand tiger could do a laceration like that. It's probably a, a shark with those pointy teeth. You know, the ones that'll dig deep and he has what I think happened to his foot. Four inch laceration to a foot is a pretty big injury. Um, still probably a small shark and, and every one of the attacks it's, you know, it's what most sharks uh, attacks are in the U.S. now that I'm thinking. I think it's rare that a large shark, if you're not on the west coast, that a large shark gets hold of a person. Um, it's bad news when they do, you know, and like I said, they've had five fatalities since 20 since 2000 over in Florida and most of the time it's a large bull shark that runs into a person and then it ends up badly. So uh, um, that's the attacks over there on Long Island. I wanted to go over those, um, you know, the ones with the, the, the lifeguards, those were interesting to me because I thought that lifeguards would be pretending like they're flailing around and drew the sharks in even though they're smaller sharks. But they're laying there and you know sharks are scavengers. Probably saw them laying there and figured well this is not alive I'm going to go up there and see if it's edible and that's what they did. So uh, you know that's that's the things that happen with those kind of smaller sharks. Uh, probably with those feet. Anytime it's feet or hands I, I, I always assume it's probably a mistaken identity. A small shark grabbed onto it sees you know the palm of your hand flash. Uh, see some contrast from, from dark to light, whether it's the bottom of your feet to your tan lines, whatever it is, they see that, they see the contrast and in the, in the surf and everything, it could probably resemble a fish to them and they go after it. So, you know, that's probably uh, what most of these small shark attacks are like. Uh, these, I have just started getting into looking at them to see if, uh, you know, there was any sharks out there really trying to eat a person to eat a person. I'm sure we'll run across it, um, but uh, you know, multiple bites from small sharks are very rare. And uh, so, you know, when you look at these stories, all seven, six of those, and then you listen to what we're told from USA marine biologists, I don't care what they do, or shark experts, whoever they are, what they say makes sense when you look at it at that, when you leave everything else out. When you leave out large sharks, they make sense. So uh, that's our story of the Long Island attacks, um, a bunch of non-predation <laughs> attacks, uh, a couple uh, a couple people bitten twice, but nobody really injured past the point of stitches. And most of them just walked out of the water. Um, the one's uh, lifeguard needed help out that had his foot bit. He, was, he needed help out of the water, but uh, a few of the other ones just walked out and that's what happens with a lot of small shark attacks is, yeah, you're going in to get stitches, but it's not going to be life threatening. Um, and unless they get, you know, an artery or something like that and there's nobody around to help you and you don't know how to put a tourniquet on yourself, um, they're not going to be able to kill you. They're not going to do it. So uh, that's our story of the Long Island attacks that happened last month and we'll get on with the show. Okay, now we're going to head over to Riviera Beach. Uh, that's on Singer Island and that's Florida. The date is February 28th of 1987. Gary Landworth, he is out doing some windsurfing and there's no time of day or depth of water even though it's pretty deep. He's only 100 yards from shore, so you're talking 300 feet from shore, but he topples off of his board and he thought that he had cut his foot, his right foot on some coral. And then he thought about it for a second and thought, no, I'm in way too deep of water for coral. So he must have bit, got back up on his board, went in, got some stitches. Uh, he, you know, it was a minor injury. He ended up surviving it. Um, but he did not see the shark, but he speculates that it was our friend, the spinner shark, uh, that went ahead and jumped on his board or went ahead and grabbed him by the foot as he fell off of his board. Uh, no telling what kind of shark had done it, but he says it might be a spinner shark, so it gave me a chance to be able to use this clip again. Uh, 
it's a legendary shark for that one that jumped up, up, spun out of the water and landed on that woman on that surfboard and knocked her into the water, giving her a black eye in the process. So, uh, you know, I've always liked spinners ever since I saw that video clip. It's just amazing. So that's our story, Gary Landworth. Not going to go on the records. Probably a smaller shark than we deal with. So I just wanted to go over it for that clip. Okay, now we're going to head over to Cotslow Beach, which is in Western Australia. And the date is November 22nd of 1925. Simeon Edelton, he is in his 50s. He is out doing some swimming. He's in crowded beach, crowded water. And a shark, a large shark, swims through the crowd. So the shark is swimming amongst people, and it goes and attacks Edelton. And it attacks him once, at least, f viciously. <laughs> people come over to try to help him in a boat. They get a hold of him, and as soon as they're reaching down to get Edelton, the shark goes in between Edelton and the boat and turns and bites Edelton in the leg again. So no telling where he was bit the first time. His leg was mangled though, the second bite. So the, the bite that he got hit with after the, the shark cut him off from getting the boat to him, it went ahead and bit his leg again. And then the people in the boat took a oar and they smacked at the shark. And the shark went ahead and rammed the boat so hard that it broke some of the timber in the boat and almost capsized the boat on them. Uh, shark must have just ended up swimming away and they were able to get his remains. There was a doctor on the beach, but there was nothing he could do. He was, they just said he was mauled. I don't see any description as far as, you know, what the first bites were. Uh, just the, you know, the leg damage alone uh, was probably great from it. They think it was a four meter tiger shark. They did catch a tiger shark um, shortly after that, but they opened up the stomach and there was no human remains in there. So there was, uh, you know, uh, disagreement as to whether that was the shark or even that was the type of shark. Uh, they were probably discussing between a white and a tiger. Uh, most likely are, you know, seeing as it's four meters, so they could have been thinking bull or tiger, uh, which are a lot harder to tell apart in a quick sense like that. They, they kind of look a little bit similar. Um, the difference would be in that I would be able to see is, you know, their front of them, the markings on the tiger or the dorsal fin. Yeah, you know, dorsal fin on a tiger looks a little weak, more like a, a dorsal fin on a basking shark than a, like a great white or a bull shark. A bull shark has a really nice dorsal fin. And uh, the weird thing is those, those hammerheads, the great hammerheads, how skinny their dorsal fin is. It's, it's not small, but it's just skinny. So, uh, you know, I always look at dorsal fins and I just am amazed by those and, and what they all look like in different things. So that's our attack on Edelton back in 25. Uh, an attack, an attempt to predate. We don't know what kind of shark, but probably a tiger shark. So I uh, might put this down tiger with a question mark next to it in the stats. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Woolly Beach, which is in New South Wales, Australia. And the date is July 11th of 2020. Manny Hart DeVille, he is 15 years old. He is out doing some surfing. It's uh, just around 2.30 in the afternoon. He is I believe waiting on a wave when people hear screams. Uh, he's attacked by a shark. Witnesses say that he screams after the first bite. Um, the shark had gone off and it came back to attack him again. Now, witnesses said that at least one surfer had gone over and tried to grab the shark and beat the shark off of him. Uh, eventually, multiple surfers got out and they got a hold of him and brought him into shore. He had such damage to his side though that he, he ended up dying, I believe right there on the beach. There was nothing they could do for him. So he passes away from his wounds. Um, I'm gonna put this down as an attack, not an attempt to predate. Uh, they said it's a 2.5 meter or eight foot uh, great white that's responsible for this. Um, that alone it adds to not being a predation just from other juvenile sharks. You know, 10 feet and under, they're, they're not uh, known for going ahead and consuming people. It's usually those larger ones, you know, 15, 16, 18 footers that go ahead and consume the bodies. So uh, I'm not going to put this one down as an attempt to predate, even though some people had to beat them off of the, you know, off of the man, uh, off the young kid. and that it was multiple bites. There's been multiple bites before where I haven't called it an attempt to predate. And this is another one. It's gonna go down as an attack, a fatality, and to a great white. 
Okay, now we're going to head over to Keaton Beach, which is in Florida. Uh, this attack happened last month during a rash of, uh, I guess, all those Long Island attacks. This one happened to be in Keaton Beach in Florida. And this happened to Addison uh, Bethia. She was out and her family were scalloping, so her and her brother, at least, were in the water. Uh, don't know how far from shore, but they're in five foot deep water and they're searching for scallops and she's attacked by a nine foot shark. It comes over and bites on her and she starts poking it and punching it, uh, poking it in the eye and hitting it, not doing anything. So her brother's eight feet away when the, she first shouts, you know, probably made a scream and was taken under the water because he turned around, saw her surface, and then bloods around her. Then he saw the shark. So he was eight feet away. He immediately went over there and just started beating on the shark. Finally, the shark let go of her and went on its way. They got her in, but she had terrible damage to her to her upper, le upper thigh, um, removed her quadriceps, uh, massive uh, vascular and artery damage to her leg. Uh, they did a couple surgeries trying to save the leg and they ended up having to go ahead and amputate it above the knee. Uh, just above the knee she was amputated and then they used some tissues uh, from elsewhere to be able to cap that off um, at the end of the knee. So uh, she went through multiple surgeries on this one. She, If it wasn't for her brother she wouldn't be here. I mean that's a uh, they said it's a nine foot shark. Uh, probably a bull shark is what I'm thinking. I haven't heard anything different. Um, it sounds just like a bull shark and it definitely was going to eat her if it wasn't for her brother. I, obviously her attempts to fight it off weren't working and you know that goes by the Baldrige stats where 50% of the time weapons don't work. So how many times does you know punching a shark work if you're the one being attacked? I don't know that it works as effectively as others beating on the shark like we've heard of this one and Hannah What's Hannah's last name? Magal, I think her last name is. The 13-year-old uh, that was on her board in eight feet of water and that 15-foot shark just was sitting there looking at her and then bit her, took her underwater and her cousin beat on its back and it let her go. So I think it's more effective when somebody else is beating on a shark than when the victim is beating on the shark. Um, but luckily she survives uh, all thanks to her brother. The guy should get an award for going over there and fighting off a shark, but you know, he's already got the, probably the best thing that you get out of this. He's got a sister around still. Uh, so sadly she lost a leg, but luckily didn't lose her life. And thankfully, thankfully to the quick action of her brother, uh, Addison will still be around. Um, We'll put this down as an attack and attempt to predate, and I'm going to put it under a bull shark until I see something different. Okay, now we're going to head over and finish off unprovoked attacks over at the Bay of St. Paul, which is Reunion Island, the date July 15, 2013. Uh, Sarah Rupert, she is 15 years old, and she's out swimming with a friend. Uh, they're only five meters from shore, so they're 15 feet from shore. Swimming along, they both have snorkels, masks, probably fins on if they have a snorkel and mask, I would assume. And they're swimming along and they get right in front of like the Bay Restaurant it's called and there's a cemetery in that area. They get right in front of there, it's forbidden for swimming because it's known to be heavy in sharks and it's unsupervised. And Sarah's attacked, her friend had just gotten out of the water and I've seen that it was either her or her sister had, Sarah's sister had witnessed um, her being taken under the water and I guess she was bitten in half when she was underwater. So uh, the shark went ahead and took her lower remains, her legs, and took that off with it. And so they set up a search party to go ahead and try to find her upper body, her, her, uh, her funeral was held on July 18th, so uh, uh, just four days after the attack, she had her funeral. So uh, I, I would think that they, they had located the upper half of her body and were able to recover that. Uh, we're going to put this down as an attack and attempt to predate. Um, they didn't know the size of the shark. They went ahead, France went ahead and said that they could go ahead and uh, kill 20 sharks. Go ahead and take out 20 sharks trying to find this shark. Um, I did see that there was a 3.1 meter bull shark, uh, I think it was a female, and then there was a 2.8 meter bull shark. Uh, both probably capable of biting a 15 year old girl in half. I mean, it's a pretty big shark. 
Um, so, you know, I was thinking maybe a, a, bull, a tiger shark, but, you know, they're, they're catching these bulls out there. It could very well have been a bull. Uh, no word of what was the stomach contents, so I don't know for sure whether either of those sharks uh, were involved in Sarah's death. We're going to put it down as an attack and a predation. We don't know by what kind of shark. Okay, before we finish out the show, I just want to go over a couple of uh, episodes of shows I had seen on the Shark Week. Um, saw the one on the, on the um, large tiger, uh, not tiger, hammerhead shark that they were trying to follow from. They were wondering whether it goes from the Keys to the Bahamas and back. You know, I'm sure sharks in warm waters go all over the place in warm waters, so that would not surprise me. Um, it would surprise me if it's the same shark going back and forth, being seen and being nicknamed. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I would think, 18-foot hammerheads. Um, you know, my dad had one come up to his boat when he was down there fishing in the Keys. Uh, but it was cool. They had some cool footage. Um, went ahead and, you know, went out there looking for... for uh, a giant hammerhead. They didn't find one. The largest one it looks like they found was about 15 feet, maybe. Um, cool episode, though. And then I watched an episode on breaching sharks and whether they use that to communicate with each other. Um, you know, they showed a great white breach. No bait, no food. It just breached out of the blue and landed in the water. And they wanted to see if it's a way they communicate. So they recorded the noise of a breach. They had the decoy out shark attack at breach. They recorded it and then they took that and they went under their boat in a in a cage and they would play that when the shark came by. And um, I had thought that it would you know scare other sharks away no matter what. Uh, letting them know that it's a feeding event. You know you get that kind of a violent uh, feeding attack where it goes after a decoy. I think that's going to be different than a shark that just breaches out of the water out of the blue. Um, so my wife thought that it might bring them in curious that there's a meal and I thought no way. So they went ahead and did their experiment and the smaller sharks, 12 feet and under, they kind of kept their distance. Once they heard the noise, they kind of put distance between them and the noise. So the smaller sharks seemed to know it was a larger shark than them that breached. But the larger sharks, the 15, 18 footers, those ones came in interested in what was going on with that. Um, so that was kind of uh, neat to see the two different sizes of sharks react differently to the noise. Um, the ones were curious and the others were, you know, kind of warned to keep their distance. And I think that's what happens in these feeding events is that the only thing that that shark is going to have to worry about when it's breaching and eating is a larger shark or a shark the same size because the smaller ones aren't going to mess around. They know that the shark could bite them and that would be it for them. But a larger shark, I don't know. I don't know that they would, uh, uh, you know, I haven't seen a second shark like come in and try to take like a small meal from another shark. Uh, I'd like to see a bunch of different seal predations to see if that ever happens. I'm, I'm pretty curious about um, how protective they are. I've seen a couple of them where they went ahead and bit the seal in half when they attacked it and the upper half of the seal is still floating on top of the water while the shark is staying right underneath. The, you can see it right in the video, uh, right below the, the seal. It's down there and you know it's swallowing what it took and then you know when it's done because it's right back up and takes the rest of the seal. Um, seen that a couple times, so um, kind of eerie with thinking about like the Nellist attack to where he was bitten in half because I'm thinking that shark was pretty much right underneath him doing that kind of circling until it finished off the legs in that case and then came back and got him. Uh, so that was kind of kind of crazy. And then uh, the episode on uh, the Morro Bay attack uh, from Christmas Eve, they went over that, uh, did a pretty good job. Uh, the only thing I, you know, wouldn't have put in there was that the shark saw something fuzzy up at the top of the water. I mean, there's no way that he knows what the shark sees. Um, you know, that's a shark whisperer moment. Somebody saying something that's never been proven. If if you've seen it, that the great white's eyesight is is shoddy, and you've seen that study, you know, let me know what it is. Throw it in the comments for me. I'd like to take a look at it and see when it was and see how they went about it. If it was like their jet ski with, with uh, GoPros on it to see how they can see, or if it was something legit. Um, they barely have done anything with great whites with colors, you know, going ahead and testing them with different colors. You think they're testing their eyesight? I mean, really, come on. 
they know little, little more than they did back in 1975 about great whites. So we're back now. We'll finish this off with uh, what were you thinking back in, I think it's December 18th of 1801. Is it 1801? Yeah, 1801. Uh, Robert Pettigrew. Stefan Pettigrew, I'm sorry. He was out and he was on a schooner. He was on some kind of a fishing trawler and they pulled aboard a shark and this 12 foot shark is now pulled onto their deck and it sounds like this 12 foot shark is still alive because what does Stefan do? He decides he's going to stand on the tail of the shark. So he's standing on the tail of this 12 foot shark and they asked the captain, the captain is the one who told them how long the shark had him. He's on the tail, and the shark did that bend itself in half, grabbed him by the arm, and wouldn't let go. So the shark's got him by the arm. The captain says for a minute and a half till it bites his arm completely off. Uh, Stefan ends up dying from the wounds, obviously, bleeds out. There's not much they, I'm sure they don't know how to deal with an attack like that back in 1801. Uh, probably weren't expecting it in the first place, um, you know. Who's got a gun in that situation? <laughs> Take care of a shark that's attacking somebody. There's not much you can do. Who knows what kind of shark it is? But you know, if he'd only watched his show, he'd know these sharks can fold themselves in half. Do not do that. But he didn't, and now he's gone. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking, but he's no longer with us. And we're not going to put this down as the attack and and non-predation as it is, the fatality that it is, as it's 1801 and not 1901. So. The only thing that keeps him from our books is that it's not 1900s forward. Uh, that's our show for today. I will see you in a few days. I hope you in, enjoyed the episode. If you did, I'll be back in a few more days. Until then, if you go into that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.